What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. The bonus video for today is going to be my choices for the top 10 worst movies from 2023. Now, before I share with you my picks really quickly, I got to share this with you. These are my choices. You probably will not agree with me and that is okay. We all don't have to agree on the same thing. We are all different people. We all appreciate movies for different reasons. So my list will not match up with yours. We can still be friends at the end of the day. So let's get into this. What movie is at number 10? Well, it's Slother House. Slother House for me is at number 10. Now the reason, the only reason it's at number 10, because Slother House definitely has the potential to be in like first place, like top five, definitely. But I put it at number 10 because even though this movie is absolutely ridiculous, it was entertaining. I was laughing beginning to end with this film. But that's the only positive aspect about this movie is that it was entertaining. The quality of the film, the acting is horrible. Like everything about the entire, the entire storyline is just so stupid. Here's what the storyline is. I know I've mentioned it once before, but let's rehash this really quickly. The plot line of Slaughter House is that you have this sorority and it's going into its brand new year at school and they're going to elect a president for the sorority. Now you have the typical sorority girl that's kind of like the mean girl. She's, I think she's been president before. She wants to continue it. She's constantly on social media, you know, that kind. And then you have another sorority girl. She's the nice one. She's the understated one, but she wants to be president so badly. So randomly, one day in a mall, of all places, she encounters a guy that could get her a sloth. So she goes and she gets a sloth because, if I'm remembering this correctly, because she believes if she has the sloth and it becomes the mascot of the sorority, she'll get to be president. Like, really? <laughs> that's the plot line of this movie so she takes the sloth unbeknownst to her it's a killer sloth she brings it to the sorority house and this sloth just starts killing everyone <laughs> it's so ridiculous it is so ridiculous the sloth knows how to take selfies it knows how to hashtag on instagram it knows how to drive a car for god's sakes like this this sloth don't underestimate it, okay? And plus the sloth itself, the way it looks, I mean, it looks like a felt puppet with hair. It's like so, so ridiculous. Like the lost Muppet. Like what, like what happened to this sloth? It looks like an eight-year-old just slopped a bunch of things together, created it in art class and said, here you go, there's your sloth. That's what it is. Like, this was such an awful movie. But like, but look, because I'm laughing, I'm remembering, I'm recalling these moments, and I'm laughing hysterically. So if you need to laugh, watch Slaughterhouse. You can stream it on Hulu. But it is not a good movie. It is so awful. It is one of the worst things I've ever seen. But because of that entertainment value... That's why it's low and it's only at number 10. All right, number nine, number nine is The Flash. I know, you may be surprised that The Flash is on the worst. Maybe you're not, I have no idea. But for me personally, The Flash was one of the worst of the year because I feel like this movie was so overhyped. And when it did not deliver, it was a colossal, colossal disappointment. And for that reasoning, you would think it would be my top 10 disappointing movies, but it's not. I put it into the worst because it was all over the place. I felt like they tried to do too much in this one movie and it just backfired completely on them. I mean, you have two berries, you have Batman, you have Michael Keaton back as Batman, you have Supergirl thrown in. Zod has returned. Then you have the bad CGI going on. You have a mom and a dad. Like there's so many plot and so many plot lines, so many things going on. It was too much. Everything was too much. So you have other, you have 
some people saying it's like one of the best movies they've ever seen. And then we really saw it and we were like, hmm, <laughs> like, how was this the best movie you've ever seen? It's not the wonky CGI, the ridiculous looking Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I mean, it all just did not work. I mean, when the Flash would go back in time and the entire like, you know, thing that they were, I don't even remember what it's called, but the thing that they were in that would, I didn't understand that. It just looked like a big room of ridiculousness, of past DC ridiculousness. It was just awful. It was not executed well at all whatsoever. So The Flash was just a big movie with too much in it, way too much in it, because we all got excited, me in particular, for Michael Keaton coming back as Batman. I mean, that was my Batman. That was my first exposure to DC and to Batman. So I was super excited that he was coming back. But after watching it, I was like, mm, I don't know. It, it didn't live up. It just didn't love, live up to all the hype and everything that we were expecting and wanting. So because of that, it's in the worst at number nine. Okay, number eight. Don't hate me kind of scared is asteroid city i know i'm putting asteroid city in the worst and i know some of you are going to hate me because i know some of you out there loved this movie you got it you understood it i am happy for you i am not one of those people i streamed this on peacock because i had no interest to see it in the theater but if it's coming to streaming i'll give it a watch so i put it on I mean, it's an, an amazing all-star cast. I mean, this cast, Scar jo, Tom Hanks, Jason Schwartzman, Margot Robbie was in there for like 2.5 seconds. You know, like there was, this was an amazing cast. So I wanted to be open-minded about this. I really, really did. But when I hit play, I did not understand what the heck was going on at all whatsoever. I was completely lost, completely freaking lost. The only positive that I can say about this film is that the production design is incredible. Nothing I've ever seen before. It has gotten some recognition. I believe Critics' Choice, it got a nomination for production design. And I completely understand that more than the movie because I didn't understand the movie at all whatsoever. I did kind of fall asleep, I think, in the middle. I guess there was an alien in there. I missed that. I don't know. I just, I didn't understand the point of this movie, what it was trying to say. Maybe I'm stupid. Am I uneducated? No, but I am with this movie because I didn't get it. So because of that, it's in there. It's in my worst. And I apologize to anyone that I offended with this choice, but it's my list and what I say goes. Okay. <laughs> On this channel anyway, what I say goes. All right. Number seven, we are going back a year early, early on in January from last year. House party. Do you remember this movie? House Party at number seven. I don't know why this movie was made. And that's the reason why it's in the top 10 worst. There was no reason for this film. We already had the original House Party. We're good. We're done. We don't need a revamped version of House Party because this revamped version did nothing to overtake the original. So because of that, it didn't even equal the original, to be honest. So because of that, there was no point to this. Absolutely none. Acting was subpar. There was nothing really special about this movie. It was just really, really pointless. So because I thought the movie was pointless, it's on the worst. And because I was growing up in the time period that the original House Party was released and made, and that's my house party, not this one. So... You know, it's in the worst. It's got to be in the worst. All right, number six is Maybe I Do. Maybe I don't with this movie. This was horrible, awful. I think I ranked it with one star on my Letterboxd account. I did not enjoy this film at all whatsoever. This movie is not even 90 minutes. I think it's like 85 minutes long. And I was looking at the clock. I was waiting for this movie to end. I did not anticipate feeling like this because you have an all-star cast. You have Diane Keaton, Richard Gere, haven't seen him in a while in the movie, Susan Sarandon, 
William H. Macy, Emma Roberts. I mean, this is an all-star cast. So I gave it a chance. It is one of the most st stupid plot lines that I've ever heard of in my entire life. All right, Emma Roberts and her boyfriend, they've been together for a while. And it's kind of one of those shit or get off the pot situations. You know, either ask her to marry you or we're breaking up. Okay, so I mean, that's relatable. That happens all the time, right? So they're dealing with that. They decide to go home to their prospective parents' homes and kind of deal with the situation, get their parents' advice, his parents, her parents, and come to find out their parents are cheating on their spouses with each other. You get what I'm saying? So Diane Keaton and Richard Gere are married in the movie, but Richard Gere is sleeping with Susan Sarandon, who is the boyfriend's mother. And then William H. Macy, who is the boyfriend's father, kind of has a thing for Diane Keaton, who is the girlfriend's mother. This is a messed up situation. This, this is like the closest thing to incest that you can get without having incest. I mean, this is like all across the board, all over the place. I don't know. I just, I didn't see the reason for this movie to be made. Was it a play? I think I saw that somewhere in the opening credits. It could have been a play. And if it was, maybe I would understand it as a play better. Maybe it would play better if it was on stage, if you get what I'm saying, instead of a movie. I don't know. I just didn't see the point of this movie. Much like House Party. Like, I don't see the point of this movie being made. It was just like all over the place. The acting was subpar. And that was really unfortunate because, like I said, you have amazing actors in this movie and... I don't know. They just didn't really deliver for me. So that's why it's on here at number six. Okay. Top five. This is a good top five. I'm confident in this worst list for top five. And number five, I'm going with the Black Demon. That was on Amazon Prime. Did you catch this? You probably didn't <laughs> because you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to watch the Black Demon Again, another shark movie. Nothing is, I don't think I'm ever going to see another shark movie that will even be close to what Jaws was back in 1975. And to me, it is so ridiculous. With practical, the amount of practical effects we can do nowadays and actually have a shark work as opposed to back in 1975 where the shark was falling apart, but they still made it work. And it's one of the most amazing movies of all time. Why can we not produce a decent shark film? Still to this day, it boggles my mind. And the Black Demon is no exception. As you can see with this poster next to me, look how big that shark is. Do you think a shark that big was delivered on screen? No. No, they never do. It's always deceiving on the poster and also on the slipcover. If it is physical media, they always have this big, gigantic shark. That's how they draw you in. I was drawn in. I was drawn in by the poster. All right, I'll check this out. No, it did not deliver at all whatsoever. And I got to be honest, for this being a shark movie, it didn't really focus on the shark all that much. It focused more on the plot line of, oh, what's his name? I can't remember his name, but the lead character of the movie, he's going somewhere for work. And he, of course, brings his family. That's just a brilliant idea. So he br brings his family. He like checks oil rigs or something. It's like some weird job. And so he brings his family along for like vacation purposes, which is such a stupid idea. And it turns out something happened to this particular rig or whatever he's checking and the 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 shark is swimming around. I, I don't even know. Like this plot line is kind of confusing to me. I, I don't know. The family's in danger. Sacrifices are made. But you know what? It, it's no Jaws. It's no Jaws. It's a big letdown. So the Black Demon on Amazon Prime, if you didn't catch it, good, good. I'm glad that you watched something else. I did not. I wasted about an hour and 45 minutes of my time on Black Demon. Okay. Spot number four goes to Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. Yet again, another movie. Why was this made? 
Why was this made? Honestly, I cannot tell you. I have no idea. So stream this movie on Paramount Plus and I enjoy Pet Cemetery. It's not my favorite, you know, little franchise because there's a few movies, you know, there's the original, which is amazing. You have Pet Cemetery 2, which is kind of weird. You have the remake, which actually isn't too bad, but it's no original. And then we have this. We have Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, which the plot line of this movie is a prequel. Of course, we're doing prequels all the time now. So this is a prequel to the original Pet Cemetery. This is the younger version. Oh, what's his name? I can names. I'm awful. It's the younger version of the the old guy in the original movie. It's him as a younger character. Did you get that? <laughs> I hope you did. I hope you're following this. I just don't see why this movie was made. It just didn't really give us anything original and brand new. It's just recycled material that we knew from the original story, from the original movie. And they kind of just expanded on that. And that was it. They didn't really answer any questions or lingering questions or open up a door to a brand new plot line or anything like that. Like, hello. Like, they didn't do that. They didn't do that at all whatsoever. I mean, there were a couple of... Were there a couple of aspects? No, there really weren't a couple of aspects that I really enjoyed. I was just... I was waiting for it to be over. I was. I mean, when it comes to Pet Cemetery, the first film is iconic. It stands on its own. It never needed a sequel, a prequel, a remake. Just, everyone's trying to make a cash grab on Pet Cemetery. You only need one, one movie, and that's it. So Pet Cemetery Bloodlines was not a fan because it just was not necessary. We didn't need the prequel story of the old guy. All right third place. What do you think is in third place? Third place, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. Who had the brilliant idea to take beloved childhood characters that we grew up with and turn them into serial killers? Like when did that happen? When did that occur? Who had the brilliant idea? They were like, hey, let's take Winnie the Pooh and piglet and make them killers like who had this idea i guess they're turning mickey mouse into one as well because now it's public domain bambi is already in the works like why are we doing this i just don't understand i mean there just isn't a lot to say about winnie the pooh blood and honey because the entire concept of this film is just utterly ridiculous like beyond ridiculous so the movie opens and you have all the Winnie the Pooh characters that we love. And the opening I thought was pretty good. And it was original because it was like hand-drawn pictures and they're like narrating the little story of Winnie the Pooh and, you know, Piglet and Tigger and Rabbit and all of them, you know, Eeyore and everything. And so it's telling the story of them and Christopher Robin, how they were friends. And then it decides to go sinister and Christopher Robin left. Oh, left all of them so they had no choice but to turn like cannibal or something because no one else was going to feed them so they turned on Eeyore I believe if I'm remembering correctly and they eat eat they eat Eeyore <laughs> so dumb and like they got the taste for it and they you know so like they continued I don't know like it's not them eating their victims but they're just killing a bunch of people it's just so dumb. And what's even more ridiculous is that the figures of Winnie the Pooh and Piglet are like grown hillbilly men. They're wearing like plaid shirts and overalls with a Winnie the Pooh mask or like a bear mask over their face. And that's it. <laughs> like there's nothing like CGI about that. I mean, they can't afford CGI. I mean, that would require a budget. <laughs> they did not have a budget for this at all whatsoever. I mean, the entire look is ridiculous. It's one of those where it's like over your entire face kind of mask, you know, not just like a plastic mask like back in the 80s, if you guys remember that at all. It's not like that with like the, you know, the elastic that would go around your head. It's not that bad, but still, it's, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It's just ridiculous. 
So it's ridiculous. And what's even more ridiculous is that we're getting more of these movies, as I mentioned. So I don't know. How long is this going to continue for? Like, what other characters are they going to turn into murderers? I mean, they did it with the Grinch, with the mean one. <laughs> I don't know how far they're going to go with this. So I guess we'll just find out. And I mean, yeah, I'm trashing the movie. Do I own it? I do. I do. I own the movie. I have the steelbook. Yes, I do. So who am I? <laughs> who am I to judge? All right. Runner up for worst movie of the year for me is Fool's Paradise. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, man. So you have Charlie Day. Charlie Day is the main character of this movie and he is completely like mute. He's silent. He, I don't think he speaks a word in this film, but the character that Charlie Day plays, he plays two roles because he's the silent character. And then off in Hollywood, there's a Hollywood actor that looks exactly like him. He's like a twin or something. And I think something happens to this actor where he does he die? I don't even remember. I do not remember. I think he dies or something happens to him. So they need to replace him. So they take silent Charlie Day and implant him into this movie because they have to get the movie made. They have to finish the film. I mean, I expected way better than this. I mean, it's Charlie Day. I find him funny in other movies. And I know a lot of other people find him funny as well. But this movie not funny. And this is not good for him and his career because I think he wrote and he also directed this and he had an all-star cast. And I mean, all-star, like there were so many celebrities in this movie, but that does not save you. That does not save you at all whatsoever. I found this film to be extremely boring. Again, a 90 minute long movie. And I was like, tick tock, let's go. Like I just, I was falling asleep during this. I found it boring. I wanted time to fly by and it wasn't. I felt like time was going backwards when I was watching this movie. It. I hate to say it because I did get a review copy in, but I, I gotta be honest. I really, really do. So you know what? Fool's Paradise, you're, you're the second worst. You're the second worst movie of the entire year. And this actually went out to theaters and I don't think it made any significant money at the box office at all whatsoever. I don't even think the majority of people knew what it was. And that's pretty awful. But it's not number one. <laughs> it's not number one. I saved my number one for Skinamarink. Oh my, what the heck was Skinamarink? I am still trying to figure this out. I have no idea what Skinamarink was, what it wanted to be, what the intentions were. I am still confused by it because literally it's an hour and 40 something minutes of you looking at the corner, at the ceiling, at a light bulb, at one of those plastic toy telephones with the creepy smile on it. That's it. That's all this movie is. That's all it is. You're focusing in on dark corners. Now, yeah, I... I wanted it to be good. I felt like the aspect of it was kind of different because the plot line, if you like read the back of the, you know, the physical media of it or whatever, I watched it on streaming. I did not pick up this movie because I had the feeling it wasn't going to be that great. So I opted to stream it. I think it was on Hulu. So I streamed it over there and the description of this film, I was like, okay, Let's watch this. But I had heard things about this movie previously. So I couldn't really go in with an absolute open mind. But I'm like, it's a horror movie. Like, do I really need that much of an open mind for a horror film? Apparently you do. Apparently you do. With Skinamarink you do. Did that sound? Skinamarink you dinky dink. Skinamarink you do. With Skinamarink you do, you have to have a completely open mind to this because I thought this was just plain stupid. The stupidest movie, the dumbest movie, stupidest, is that even a word? I don't know. My lack of intelligence is showing, but like this was the dumbest, most waste of time I've ever spent watching a film. And I'm sitting here and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting for something to happen and nothing 
ever freaking happens. The description of this film is you have like two kids in a house with their father, apparently. But then the father, I think, leaves and the kids can't get out because there's no doors and no windows. Something like that. So kids are trapped inside of a house. I mean, that's pretty scary, right? Like, that's creepy. That's scary. But literally, like I said, all this movie does for an hour and 45 minutes is show you the corner of the room, the dark, spooky corner of the room. <gasps> the light up above. <gasps> the ceiling fan no <gasps> like are you kidding me that's all you're doing and then there's occasional whispers here and there like and if you don't have closed captioning on you don't know what the heck is being said because it's so quiet you got that you probably didn't because that's what the movie sounded like <laughs> that's what the movie sounded like this i've never been so frustrated with a movie in all my life because like i said you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting for something to happen and when nothing happens why did i waste my time watching this damn thing like why did i waste an hour and 45 minutes of my time watching a dark corner of a room i could do that right now <laughs> it's not scary i could do it again I'm not scared. I'm not scared of a goddamn corner of a room. So ridiculous. I don't know what the heck Variety is thinking because Variety ranked all the horror movies from the past year or something and they put Skinamarink at number one. Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? Skinamarink is your number one? Get bent, okay? Like you don't know. <laughs> you don't know horror films. Whoever wrote that article, you're insane. You're absolutely insane. And I don't know what the heck you're thinking because Skinner Marink, in my opinion, the worst movie of 2023. So I am done. That is it. I've ranted enough. If you didn't catch my drift already, I really don't like Skinner Marink. <laughs> really don't like Skinner Marink. But those are my top 10 worst movies from the past year. If you are anywhere in the ballpark with any of these movies with me, then I would love to hear about it. Comment down below. If not, then tell me your top 10 worst movies from last year. Comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you next time. <laughs>